Hey there, everybody. I'm Chris Metzler, one of the programmers with the Green Film Festival San Francisco. Uh, as you know, we try to bring some of the most kind of interesting, cool, and just kind of punk rock environmental and uh, outdoor documentaries from around the world to here in the Bay Area. You just had a chance to see this really wonderful film out there, a uh, national park story. And we're lucky enough to have the producer, Graham Rob Vogel here. Nice to meet you, Graham. Great to meet you, Chris. Um, so probably a good leaping off point is, um, you know, what was the kind of genesis of the idea for the film? And you kind of take this kind of leap of faith that there was this larger story to be told. Yeah, so our, our filmmaker, Brendan Hall, um, this was really um, began as a passion project for him. Um, he had just graduated from college. He was living in New York and had um, he graduated from film school specifically and had originally gone to film school thinking he would direct like big action movies or something like all of us who go to film school <laughs> go in thinking. Um, but, you know, in, in college, realized he really loved the outdoors he graduates, he, um, he, he got like an office job working for like a network in New York. Um, and then in the summer of 2016, he, um, he realized it was the centennial of the national park service and him and his buddy, Anthony basically just came up with this idea that they wanted to road trip to as many parks as possible. And, you know, Brendan, a documentary filmmaker he's always capturing things and part of the plan was they were just going to make a film about the experience and they just kind of launched into it and that's that's what the plan was they were going to hit as many as possible they had a route sketched out of approximately ten thousand miles um and and they they you know they wanted to tell a story about the the centennial's 100 year anniversary what they realized along the way is that they they kept meeting these amazing people who are the characters that are featured in the film. And as a result, they kept on filming with these folks and it really became more about their personal stories as opposed to kind of a traditional nature documentary that's very kind of macro level view about the history of these places. And then um, kind of midway through the trip, I think Brendan came to this realization that the film he was making was about how the parks impact these real people. And, um, you know, they, so that along the way, they kind of met four key characters that you see in the film. And um, after they came back, he had a while to sit with the footage. He ended up filming with them more over the course of several years, kind of fleshing out their stories, filming in more parks. And that's what kind of came together to become this film. Cool. And then, um, you know, one of the things I thought was, you know, there's lots of interesting things about the film, but I mean, so often kind of what we might consider um, outdoor kind of natural history films that kind of, you know, if they're not kind of adventure films or like, I, I guess, um, you know, kind of adrenaline adventure <laughs> films, you know, um, often they're told, you know, from the perspective of kind of older filmmakers and things. And what do you think, um, you know, the team kind of brought is just like a, kind of a more kind of youthful exploration of the national parks, uh, you know, two things. Yeah, I, I think the youthful energy is something that shines throughout the entire film. And just the fact that, you know, the film is, um, it's about these individuals who each have their own kind of pods in the narrative, but then it's all wrapped up in this road trip narrative between these two buddies. And I think that's what kind of makes it a feature and and kind of, gives it that narrative flow and you can kind of just feel that energy and yeah like going off what you said I think most media in the kind of nature documentary space is they're like these big productions made by these like veterans who have been doing these types of shoots for many years um and this this is kind of an example how just basically one one filmmaker Brendan can, can just throw a bunch of gear into his Subaru and get these um, not only like incredible breathtaking nature visuals, but also get these really intimate and emotional human stories. Yeah. And do you think, I mean, you know, um, over the course of kind of uh, making the film and finishing it as you guys have gotten it out there in the world, have you seen, like, have you got a sense of like that, 
our country's relationship, I guess, with national parks has kind of evolved a bit from the kind of initial genesis of the film through, of course, now getting through the pandemic and things. I mean, has the pandemic shaped, you know, how people think about national parks or even, you know, does the story resonate in different ways than you all expected? Yeah, that's an interesting question in terms of like how it resonates, um, how it resonated maybe back when the film was started in 2016 to now. I think that I mean, so, so much has happened, you know, like um, Obama was president in, during the centennial in 2016. We had COVID, which I think, I think it, there were some interesting things that came out of that. One was that I think it really brought people out to the outdoors. People were stuck in their homes and they needed a safe place to go. And the national parks honestly provided that respite. Um, and on the flip side, what's happened is um, you know, uh, park like, um, attendance is at record highs and some of the most popular parks, especially are stretched really thin and having all of these logistical issues related to that. And that's something we explore in the film too, is kind of this balance between, um, these two goals of the parks. One is land preservation, but then the other is making this available to all Americans and people all over the world. So, um, and those two can sometimes contradict each other. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's this kind of uh, collision of ideals in, in some way. Do mm -hmm. you think, I mean, you know, as you've all have started to kind of screen the film and things, um, you know, when we walk out of the theater or after we watch the film at home, you know, like, you know, what do you think, uh, Brendan and your team's, um, like, what's the kind of conversation that you all uh, want to have? Or is the encouragement just to kind of like, hey, um, go and get in the car or, you know, in, on your bike and, you know, head and kind of check out some of these parks that, you know, yeah, is there any kind of like, not that there needs to be this like, uh, takeaway, you know, but like, you know, just personally, are there things that you think that, you know, things? Yeah, that are well? definitely a couple of thoughts on that. First, like, surface level message definitely is just this is about encouraging folks who maybe would never think to go experience the outdoors in this way to go out there. It's about making um, all sorts of people feel like the parks can be accessible for them, which, the, which you know, they are, as opposed to just kind of like hardcore, you know, nature junkies. Um, but I, I think that some of the deeper things that folks have taken away and kind of we've learned in, in some of our initial screenings, um, you know, people often find a person in the film, a story, or even a specific park that they resonate with from their personal memory. It might be that they've been to that park and have a memory. It might be that one of the characters' stories really resonates with them. I think what the film kind of challenges viewers to think about is their own relationship with nature and some of their own experiences and how that's shaped them. Because the film is about how nature has, and the park specifically have shaped these four characters. So I think that's something that we hope everyone kind of takes away is um, thinking about their relationship um, and, and um, to it. And then on top of that, you know, from that thinking about what they want to do moving forward to help preserve this, this treasure we have. There is definitely an underlying message of preservation, but our goal was not to make it such an issue film. We also wanted this to be a film that doesn't become politicized. We kind of wanted this to be something that all viewers could connect to. Very cool. Well, thank you again for uh, making the film and um, we're excited to have you as part of the festival. So, um, you know, good luck on the journey and uh, I'll look forward to uh, once our once our festival's over and <laughs> getting back outside again. Definitely. Thanks so much, Chris. Thanks, Graham.